Howdy guys, just came out to the hangar. We've been flying one Bravo Charlie quite a bit since we got her picked up from paint. Now it's time to change the oil. I usually change the oil somewhere between 30, 35 hours or so. We got about 34 hours since picking her up from paint. So I'm gonna show you guys how to change the oil. First step, you gotta get the engines nice and warm. So we're gonna go take the plane around the pattern a couple times and we'll come back and get the oil changed. So I usually will, if I know that I need an oil change when I come back from a flight, I'll just pull the drain plugs out, let the oil drain, and then just walk away and come back the next day and finish up the oil change. But I was sitting there thinking to myself, I was like, man, I've been flying quite a bit lately. So I need to change the oil and or check the oil hours. So I checked the hours and uh, well, we were at 34. So it was time, time to get it changed. So I had a morning before I needed to go to work. Time is uh, very critical for me. I had the time, it was time to do it. Four ground, Twin Cessna 771, Bravo Charlie. Is that Skyhaven request taxi, uh, VFR? We're gonna do one lap around the Delta, then land. We're just heating up the oil for a change. Twin Cessna 771, Bravo Charlie, roger, runway 15, taxi via Alpha, cross 18, hold short 15. 15 via Alpha, cross 18, short of 15, 1BC. Tower Twin Cessna 771, Bravo Charlie is ready to go runway 15. We're just going to take one wide lap around the Delta and then land back on 15 if that's okay. Twin Cessna 771, Bravo Charlie, roar tower, runway 15, clear for takeoff, proceed on course. 15, clear for takeoff, 1 Bravo Charlie, thank you. Already, very accommodating and very slow here. It appears we are the only one in the Delta. Pretty stiff left crosswind. Usually feel that early on in the roll with this big tail. So we get enough airflow over it. All right, fuel pumps are on low. Fuel's on the mains. Throttle's coming up to 1700. Mixture is full rich. All right, tower is taxi. Everything's looking good. Is seven miles to the southwest of the field, requesting a transition to the northeast through your airspace. Cessna two zero zero nine five Aurora Tower transition approved. Altimeter two nine zero six nine. Green. Air speeds alive. Two nine zero nine five. Fuel flows look good. Eighty. Ninety. One hundred. Rotate. Step the brakes. Here coming up. And we're climbing out of blue line. Oh my god, I think I found the key to my landings, guys. I mean, that wasn't like the world's smoothest, but I did these VGs. I had to take a full 20 off of my short final speed. And then that was so much better than it has been. So much better. No brakes needed today. Twin Cessna 1 Bravo Charlie, turn left at Alpha, cross runway 18, taxi to the ramp, remain this frequency. Left at Alpha, cross 18, with you to the ramp, 1 Bravo Charlie, see ya. Alrighty, I'm gonna finish taxiing her back to the hangar, and then I will show you guys how to do an oil change. Hopefully, I can set up some cameras and it can make sense for those that are interested. Gotta be really into aviation to 
or mechanically inclined to care about that. I know that doesn't appeal to everybody. For those who just like our aviation adventures, Jamie and I are still planning new trips. Uh, we will continue that uh, throughout the year. And thanks again for the support. We'll see you guys in just a little bit over at the hangar. Alright guys, just gotta push back into the hangar. The engines are super hot right now. So I'm just gonna pop the side off the cowlings off on each side just to let it cool down. It's the same thing on both sides. So we'll just show one side of this just to show you guys. But it's pretty simple. These screws just come out. I think these are called Zeus fasteners. They stay in there. And so I'm just gonna pull this off so that these engines can cool down so that I can touch it and get the oil out of it without burning my hands. After you get the side doors down, now the air is flowing in there, it'll really cool it down. I always pull the top cowling off too, just so that I can inspect everything, kind of like I was mentioning when I was taxing out earlier. So I'm going to take the top off, same thing, it's just some Zeus fasteners all around, and then you can just lift it right up and set it off. There you go guys, this is what it looks like, fully uncowled. Got access to everything, we're going to let it finish cooling down now. And then I'll show you guys the rest of the process. Right. So here we are underneath the plane, just underneath the left engine. This little panel right here with these seven screws, that just simply covers the oil drain plug, which you guys will see in just a minute. I got everything I need here, I've got 10 quarts of Phillips 66, 20W50. I got my Pita cam guard that I throw in there. I've got a collector cup for my oil filter or oil analysis, and we'll take that midstream. And I got my wrenches and pliers and stuff to cut all the safety wire and stuff. So you guys will see how this goes. It's really pretty simple. Uh, but very important. So now step one, you just got to take the cover off and that takes a bit. So now if you look in here, this is the drain plug. That's the pan, the oil pan. And there's this piece of safety wire that's hooked to the drain plug. And you always got to make sure when you put the safety wire back, that it's pulling it tighter, not pulling it looser. I know it sounds simple, but you'd be surprised. I'm gonna cut the safety wire. <sighs> Try to collect it, which happens every now and then. Got that one. So that's it, you get the safety wire out of the way. And now we're ready for the messy part. I use regular old five gallon, five gallon drum, or barrels. And then we're just gonna try to make the least mess possible. I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. Put a glove on because it's still a little bit hot. For mine, it's seven eighths. Just crack it open. Doesn't take a lot of pressure. There's a crush washer on there. So we're gonna pull it. Try to have this right underneath, just like. Just like in your car. Haha. -ha. Pinning. So the drain plug, put that back. That's gotta be reused. The wind here sucks. My camera is now covered in oil. So we're gonna get about halfway done. And then we're gonna take this. It's just a guesstimate. There's no real science to it. And that looks good. Uh, did a little better this time. Put the lid on that. We'll send that off for analysis. Hopefully we get a clean bill of health. So that's it. As you can see, we're just gonna let it finish draining out here. And then once it's fully done, we're gonna pop the filter off and I'll show you guys how to do that. We're gonna let this drain for a bit. 
as mentioned, here's the oil filter. I use Tempest oil filters. That's a spin-on filter. It goes right onto the oil, fil oil filter adapter. You got this safety wire, like I said, you wanna make sure that it's pulling it tighter, which it is, not pulling it looser so that it cannot spin off. So we're gonna cut off the wire, pull off the oil filter. So now you can see the hole there in where the safety wire goes, it's completely free. So now I'm gonna use the wrench. There's a torque wrench that comes specifically for these Tempest filters and it's preset for torque. So we're gonna put this on, we're gonna back the filter off and we're gonna put some cardboard underneath to try not to make a mess here. So let's see how we do on that. So now, this is what we have in here. I don't know if any of this is turning out. You can see the oil filter adapter. We were able to get that out of there without any oil coming off. So what we're gonna end up doing now is we'll clean that up. It's done dripping out now. And we're gonna take the new oil filter that we have right here, put it on, and we're gonna torque it in. Just get it started nice and easy. I get the angle just right. And you should be able to screw it all the way in until the gasket touches. So now we take torque wrench, we put it on, and we just tighten it until it clicks. clicked so that's it you get it till it clicks and then we put the safety wire back on I'll show you guys how to do that I'm gonna dump the old oil filter out and then uh, put that to the side because we're gonna end up cutting the old oil filter and inspect for metal in the pleats I'll show you guys that in just a bit so I get most of the oil out of the filter just pour it into the barrel underneath and then I put them upside down in the garbage can to let them finish leaking out I leave them like that for a day and then it makes it easier when we come back and cut them. I will show you how we do the cutting of the oil filter and the inspection for metal in there. So now we take some safety wire. Don't have to be exact. You know, I always get way more than I need. Try to make sure it doesn't scratch the airplane. Cut a piece of safety wire off. And then we're going to thread it through that back hole on the oil filter adapter and then you just kind of even it out you get equal parts you pull it kind of tight here I usually just cut it back again just so when I'm twisting they're together and then you just measure, again, you want it to make sure it's pulling it tighter. So you just measure about how far you think it should go, which for me is right here. And then you lock the safety wire pliers in place. And then you just pull this and it spins it on tight. Once you have a nice braid in the wire, you check out how you did. I put the safety wire on the back of the hole there. I braided it nice and tight. I thread it through right here. And then you just reach up with your safety wire pliers and you pull it and you get it nice and tight in there. And then you safety wire the outside, curl it back together where it's nice and tight and looks good. And that's it. So the final look at a properly installed filter for the 310 here 
have it on, we have it marked with the times, the dates, you get it torqued on properly, and then you safety wire it. So now if it tries to come off, the wire pulls it tight, doesn't allow it to come off. So that's it for the oil filter. So now we're gonna go back, put a new crush washer on the drain plug, safety wire the drain plug, and then we can start dumping the oil back in. Alrighty guys, we're back under the plane now. And before I put the drain plug, it is a lot easier if you go ahead and loop the safety wire. And there's a, it's very hard to see, but on the top of the drain plug hole, there's a hole where you can shove the safety wire through. It's important when you put the drain plug back in that you install a new crush washer. When in doubt, just leave the old crush washer on if you don't remember and then you do it the same way every time. The crush goes up. So I'm going to take the old crush washer off, set it over here next to the junk pile. Then we're just going to clean up the drain plug real good. Not that it really matters. Again. This is just the way I change oil. I am not an AMP mechanic, I will reiterate. But owners of aircraft can do some limited things, some preventative maintenance items, change tires and batteries and change your oil and a few other minor things. This is just the way that I do it. So you get that cleaned up, put the new crush washer on, and then I clean it off a bit, put the bolt in, make sure there's no cross threading, should go on all the way nice and easy until the crush washer contacts. I'll wipe it off again, keep everything nice and clean. Then back to your 7 8 inch wrench. Just snug, but not over tightening. You do not want to get this thing stuck on here forever. You don't want to damage damage the hole. So that's good there. So back to safety wire pliers. Cut off some of this excess. Right about there. a little tighter in here to get a good safety wire done. Doesn't take much. So now if you look up in there you can see the safety wire looks pretty good. It goes through the pan, through the bolt, and it's pulling the bolt tighter. It's pulling the bolt this way. So if the bolt tries to come off the safety wire will not allow it to come off. So that's it. Now all we have left is to dump the oil in. I, I leave this off and we'll dump all the oil in, put the cowlings back on, and then we'll go take it out and run it up after we get the oil dumped in because then we have to come back and leak check it, make sure nothing's leaking anywhere. It's pretty simple. Drain plugs in, super important part. Now you just come back filters on, everything's done. Take one quarter at a time, and then you just dump it in here. Set it like that, and then you just let it drain. We'll do that 10 times in a row, and then we'll put the pint of cam guard in, and then We'll cow it back up and give her a quick run up. Alrighty, all 10 quarts are in. Put the pillar cap back on. Drain plug is safety wired. Oil filter is on and safety wired. There's 10 quarts of oil in here. We're gonna put the cowling back on, button it up, and go run it up. Leak check.
clear. Just do a quick start up here. First thing you're looking for right away, make sure you got oil pressure. Oil pressure's good. We'll lean for ground ops. I usually just go across the pad, uh, across the runway to that run-up pad on the north side of 27. I just want to see the oil kind of get up the temperature. I try to run it up to about the max ground run-up. I'll feather the props just to circulate all the oil in there. And then we'll go back and we'll shut it down and we'll do a leak check. Ground, Twin Cessna 771, Bravo Charlie. Coming out of Skyhaven. Uh, I just need to run up the engines for a bit after an oil change. Can I cross the approach end of 27 and do that in the pad on the north side of 27? Twin Cessna 771, Bravo Charlie. Uh, proceed to the mic, or check your mic brands. The uh, Alpha 1, Mic 1, cross runway 27. Alpha 1, Mic 1, cross 27 to the mic ramp. 1, Bravo Charlie, thank you much. We're about lined up with the wind sock across the runway. Let go, but the runway's closed, so uh, let me know if it gets on the other side. So here we are. What I usually do is just kind of like a pre-takeoff. I'll just run it up to about 1,700 RPMs. And then I'll feather the props. Not fully feather, but you guys know what I mean. I usually just do that. I don't typically do this more than once, but after an oil change, I'll do it twice just to, to kind of flush the oil that's out of the propeller hub with fresh, clean oil. All the gauges, everything looks good. This is pretty much it. I'll just run it up for just a minute or two and then go back and leak check it. That's the 310 pilot way of doing the oil change. We pop this cow down, turn the lights on. We're looking at the uh, oil filter, looking at the adapter. Don't see any leaks. There are no leaks anywhere in there. Come down to the bottom side of the airplane, look at the drain plug. There's no leaks anywhere around the drain plug. So that's it. That's all we needed to do. This conducts how to change an oil on a Cessna 310. All right guys, well, it's been a couple of days. I just usually pull the filters, let them sit down just to finish leaking out the rest of the oil, just to make them dry. I let them do this for a couple of days. And then you take each filter and just strap it onto the vise here. And then they have these oil filter can wrenches. And it's pretty simple. You just put it on, you make sure it's seated right, and then you just twist it around. And then here's the paper filter. So now what we're gonna do is sit this out. And this is what I do. Other people may do something completely different, but I get a razor knife and I cut it around both sides here. And then I pull it out, pull it apart and inspect it with a magnet. So hopefully this turns out, we'll see. What I do is I pull out and inspect each pleat to make sure that there's no, uh, no metallic flakes in there. And that's where the magnet comes in handy. You can get whatever magnet you like. I like this one because you can fit it down in here. So you'll see little particles that are just uh, non-metallic buildup sometimes. I believe it's just carbon or whatever it is but so you I will just run this just in case it's like some microscopic metal that I can't even see then when you get done just throw them in the trash
If I ever had a question or if I thought I saw metal, I'd put this in a Ziploc bag. I would take it to my mechanic. Um, and again, I look in the filter, but nothing there. So clean bill of health. I make sure to put the entry in the engine log books, uh, change the oil, uh, you sign it as the owner, put your pilot certificate number in there, you make sure to date, put all the times and stuff. And the only other thing that I'll show you guys, hopefully I can attach it maybe at the end of this video, is what an oil analysis report looks like. They tell you they have different columns and it shows you this particular analysis and they check for, I don't know, 30 different types of metal and criteria and they show you your last three oil changes what each parts per million were for each category and they tell you an average for your engines throughout the fleet throughout the country so you can kind of see what your engine's doing right now what the trends are of your engine and what the averages are across all other engines like yours so it's pretty neat uh, the idea being hopefully you can catch something early before you end up losing an engine in flight and you can get it taken care of whether that means a new engine or new cylinder or whatever it may be uh, lifters whatever it may be anyway thanks for the support guys hopefully this oil change video i've had a lot of people ask for more technical type stuff well, pre-flights walk arounds oil changes whatever so i just thought i'd do some occasional videos showing the other side of owning an airplane it's not always fun travel all over the world Sometimes you gotta do a little work to keep the bird healthy and happy. But until next time, we'll see you guys around. Bye.